Good afternoon. No. Not, we're, wait, good afternoon. We're on. Hi, Michael Miller here with former and founding mayor of Palmetto Bay, Jean, Eugene Flynn. Welcome. Well, thank you for having me here today. So today we're, we're just going to lay it all out on the line. So, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no holds barred. That's it, yes. So tell us about your early years in Palmetto Bay. Uh, the good years, man. Camelot. Yes. Camelot. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun putting that together. You know, it was a lot of sleepless nights uh, putting that together, a lot of emergency ordinances, a lot of getting things done. Uh, it was getting the people involved, getting the vision started, uh, teamwork. And so what's going on now in, Pal in, Pal in Palmetto Bay? What are some of the other cities saying about the current um, state of the city? Well, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but just go to my uh, my YouTube channel and you can see some of the excerpts of what's been said out there. I mean, you can't run. I know some people are upset that I put it out there, but you know, I didn't say it. You mm -hmm. know, uh, when people get upset with you, people didn't say it. You you publish it, you put it out there. Nothing was uh, not, nothing was changed. It was put out there in its natural format. Um, you know, but I tell you, it's frustrating. I think. We've gotten away from back in the early years, back when, when Matzner was mayor of Pinecrest, when uh, Tim Mirbot was a council member of Cutler Bay, and we put together the South Dade Municipal Coalition to start working on these traffic issues. All that appears to be gone now. It's, it's, it's well, every, well, every city for itself now. Well, clearly there's a huge traffic problem. So y you were mayor for how many, t how many years? Three great terms. Three great terms. So how many years is that? That's 12. 12 years, okay. Then the last time out was 2016? 2014 to 2018. All right, so in 2018 you ran again, right? Yeah, I did. And you got kicked around a bit. You Why know, don't you tell everybody what the score was on that one? It, it, well, the score was, you know, it, it's all window dressing. It's either a W or an L. Um, you know, I came up short, but I'm very proud of the campaign I ran. and. You know, it's funny, uh, I still approach some people who uh, admit to me they voted a different way and they've got voter remorse and I said, you know, I ran a policy-based campaign, I didn't run from the facts, I put it out there and mm -hmm. I think this last year's done nothing but uh, vindicate the uh, four years that preceded this current term. And we're going to get on to that in a second, but I, I, I can't help but see you're doing a lot of bicycle riding. You call it bicycle riding or bike riding? Bike riding, okay. bicycle riding, I don't care what you call it so long as you're out there doing it. And I, I, I see your, your, char your chart on Facebook, I see that. So when you're out, how many hours are you riding uh, on the weekends? Uh, anywhere from a good ride to about three hours to a minimum of about an hour and a half on a, on, a, on a slow day. On a slow day. And when, you, when you're out there, are you by yourself or in a group? I, I, I ride with the Everglades Bike Club, the premier bike club that promotes bike safety. What's the name of it again? Everglades Bike Club. Not okay. to give a plug to them, but let's give them a good plug. It's a good group. Learn to ride. Go on out there. Great group. Very social. Um, different divisions to get out there and kind of learn how to ride in the group, how to obey the signs and uh, ride safely. And speaking of plugs, I want to thank our sponsor. We have two sponsors today. One is the Avery at Collie Square. They got some great birds, Christmas time, super pets. You might want to give them a call down there. And also Stunna's Fit, which is a gym right down the street from here. You can see them on Instagram and you really get into a great shape. Thank uh, you, because without the sponsors, you know, people should patronize your sponsors. Yes, absolutely. So a few weeks ago, there was a whole lot of a heck of a, heck of a problem down there in Palmetto Bay concerning some ducks. Mm. Can you tell us what happened? Carnage. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. I tried to bring forward and make Palmetto Bay a bird sanctuary, I think it was back in 2015, maybe early 2016. Mm -hmm. It got uh, pecked to death and uh, didn't move forward, which is, you know, hey, I'm one of five votes. If the other people didn't want to do it, then at least I felt good about putting it out there. That came home the roost just a few months ago. Um, and, and in terms of, uh, you know, I know you're a bird person. Yep. I mean, I think we heard the descriptions out there. I mean, it was just a wholesale bird slaughter from yes. what I heard. And uh, right now the city's trying, or the village, is trying to uh, try to enact some ordinances that may try to limit some of that. Dave Singer's brought it forward. Uh, my ordinance was based upon a lot of ordinances that were out there. It was primarily based upon the town of uh, Davies, which is a very 
green city, you know, very uh, wildlife concerned area. And, uh, you know, again, uh, they were concerned with some of the uh, language that was in there. His is a little simpler, but I really applaud David for addressing the issue. Of course, now that's all retroactive. It's being reactionary to the issue. We could have been proactive and really uh, prevented this. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought up about things to prevent. So there <coughs> was a State of the City address a, f a few weeks ago, right? And where was that? That was uh, at Thalada, which I'm very proud to have fought hard to bring uh, yes. out of private ownership into being a public park. So there was this, uh, the State of the City address was being held there, Okay. right? Do I have that right? I want to paint the picture. That's the way the news reports have it. Okay. But we couldn't help but see there were somewhere between 35 and 50 people out front of the State of the City address, and people were there, young people, older people, kids with signs. Did you happen to see any videos of that? I did see videos. What did some, some of the signs say? No right turn? No. <laughs> so the... Uh, the, uh, yeah, the signs were very concerned with, uh, with bridging and with uh, completing the grid, and I think some of them got a little personal towards some of the politicians, but I'm going to try to stay away from that. Okay, so what are some of the, the, the big issues facing the, the people that live in Palmetto Bay and the surrounding areas? <sighs> Obviously, traffic's an issue, yep. and yeah, it's funny, during the campaign, you know, people were talking about uh, responsibility for development. I think under my administrations, we had grown a grand total of less than five or six hundred people. Um, of course, anybody wants to see the information. I'm very transparent. I have it all on my website, uh, www.eugeneflynn.com. Uh, you can go back and. Uh, Unlike the village official website, I don't take things down. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all still there, and you can see the counts. Uh, development happens. It's happened down south, and people are surprised when you don't allow developable, developable areas to develop, and then they're surprised to find out that it's gotten pushed down into farmland and, and everything else. So all that stuff's traveling north through our village now. We are now the new Coral, uh, not Coral Gables, we are the new Grove. I mean, anybody has been in the Grove and sees the traffic that goes through there, it's not uncommon. So when was the last time you saw protesters, in the, other than at the homestead where the kids were being imprisoned, when was the last time one of the cities had people with protest signs? Do you I will say that this was a, uh, uh, a, a new experience for the village. Okay, so the, the uh, I mean, David Zisman, I think, had threatened it a couple times on the uh, administration that preceded me, right. but I don't think it ever came to fruition. And by the way, were you involved with the uh, fire uh, house, fire station going in? Yes. Right, so congratulations on that. Now congratulations to all the people. John Breeder, one of our first council members, we had put together the. Um, we had put together a public safety committee, and there were many residents on that. Um, you, you know, I'm very proud. I want to thank uh, our our former uh, Congresswoman Ileana Ross Leighton, because remember, we got an act of Congress through to try to put it at the USDA land. Unfortunately, when I was termed out in 2010, uh, until 2014, there were a few bumps in the road that took it out of there. But fortunately, they found the area off 142nd and Old Cutler Road to put it in. So, uh, speaking of bumps in the road, <laughs> so we we have in our possession here a, a where were we um, a rather large eight and a half by eleven postcard two sided that was mailed to voters. I'm not sure how many voters. Two sided. I think it was pretty one sided. If you oh, ask me. Uh, yes, it was actually, but it printed on two sides, four color, and it has return address to somebody in Tallahassee. Uh, looks like a political action committee. And this group, I'm not, I don't know who they are, all right? It starts off the greatest for mayor, it is in for Mayor Cunningham's first year in office, and it says F. And it has all these things that are um, things that she voted for. Since, you, since you're acutely aware, did she vote for these things? And, and what difference did, did that make? Well, I know I didn't remove the village attorney while I was mayor. And I want to add, the village attorney at that time, we originally had hired Earl Gallup. He unfortunately passed away, and my, you know, we think of him often. He got us off to a great start. We had Eve Bootsis. She was replaced with Dexter Leighton uh, while I was out of office from 2010 to 2014. And I think I worked very well with him. When I came back into office in 2014, 
Dexter, uh, the manager, and myself, we worked very well getting all that litigation resolved. The litigation with Palmer got that settled. That saved a lot of money to the taxpayers. So one and two, the village manager and the village attorney, yes, I would say that uh, I don't know of anybody else who's responsible for uh, removing those two. In, in all fairness, when new administrations, new elected officials go in, they typically, uh, at some point or another, start to replace some of their folks. This, how long was the city manager in office? Yeah, but let's, let's I mean, it's, it's obvious to say, well, somebody can come in and they can pick their own people, but it's how you do it. Do you do it all at once? Do you create upheaval? Mm -hmm. Uh, what were the, why was this done at the time it was done? I mean, the manager had had reviews at the budget time. Uh, I didn't hear complaints about the budget, and then boom, uh, just a month later, he's out. Um, there was I a think big the taxpayers are owed an explanation as to why they could work with him at budget time, and then suddenly something got personal. You, you've been in politics a long time. Is it, is it usual that it, when the city manager, the city attorney is, is being considered to be replaced, that they, uh, that people come and protest the, the move by the elected officials to replace them, or do people not care? I think if you make a good case for why you're doing it, if you do it in a way that doesn't embarrass people, people understand and they recognize it's a, it's, it's, uh, there's nothing personal about it. There should be no hard edges to that. But when it's just done in a manner that appears abrupt without explanation where it looks like it's just maybe a power grab versus uh, trying to go in different directions. Uh, I, I think that's where people get upset and they start to think of, is this part of a, a bigger issue? And I think that's when people start coming out and start protesting. Wait, what was the third one item that was on Voted there? for high-rise development. Now, this is something I did hit her on during the campaign and I, I you know, I. I guess I didn't make the case strong enough, but you know, people were saying a vote for me was a vote for more development, more cars. Quite frankly, since then, I, I, you know, she voted for more development than I did. I voted against the development on 174th Street. That has yet to come in. I don't think that's going to bode well for the people living uh, on on uh, 87th Avenue and 174 area. I laughed. The crowd laughed with me when the traffic study said that. Only six percent of the people coming out of there were going to turn and head uh, head east toward 87th Avenue. So, on on these first three items, did they, did those items those uh, items occur? The first two did for sure. The third item, uh, do, you, I, do you know what what development did she vote against? I, d I don't know. Whatever one was on here. I mean, I can I you know uh, you know I had didn't write this. I'm looking at this now. Um, you know, you're putting me on the spot. Um, you know, I I. You know, everybody says, I don't want five stories, I don't want eight stories, but people don't remember, and I was trying to give them the value of the institutional background on this, that uh, back under the original county code, there could have been 20,000 units in that yes, DUV I area. I remember that. And it brought it down to 5,000 units. So I understand people want zero, but... So and anything that passed took a majority. So at least three people had to go along with those items. That, that is you, correct. Right? So this is not, this is a, a council issue, not just any g given person. Well, it's who's leading the council. Remember yep. during the campaign, she made the case that I was leading the council, therefore I'm responsible for it. I guess now it's every politician's, once you're out of campaign mode, you don't want that responsibility you cast on others right. uh, when you were running against them. So uh, if it was fair during the campaign, it's certainly fair now. Oh, hello, Lou Guild, Council uh, Commissioner in South Miami. Let's see who else we've got. Mark Lago. Hey, Mark and Barbara. From nice to see you and, well, and Ron. A, thank you. A, right out, right a over there. Rare air crowd with us here, and thank yes. you for joining in. So, so can, let me, if I can see this for a second. So this right here is a postcard that was sent out. This is a, clearly attacking the mayor for positions. When is the election coming up? For her. By the way, that's not the first time something like that's gone out. Uh, Vice Mayor John Dubois sent one out on me uh, back in 2016. So on, on, against you. Against me. So, uh, you know, um, I think John Dubois was actually the first one to ever send out a mailer attacking a sitting member of the village council. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, And I, I think to this day... Um, Got, I remain Kat's the only got your one tongue. that's been uh, attacked by a sitting council member. So, so, so right now, but her, when is the uh, election for mayor? 
What year is that? Uh, unless there's a special election, it's going to be uh, in three years from now. Well, did you hear that? A special election. So, so this guy, this was, I think, set out last week. So this week, today's um, Wednesday, there was another one that, this is right here. It says here, Karen spends your, you pay. Uh, Mayor Cunningham has cost Palmetto Bay taxpayers $1.4 million. Wow. Uh, that's a whole bunch. And on this side right over here, it, it looks like a receipt, well done here from an artistic and design point of $1.4 million. You didn't print that, did you? <laughs> no, we, we had nothing to do with it. I don't know who did it. Um, but why are, they, why are whoever it is, why are they pressuring the mayor at this point? And why don't, if they're trying to get somebody new in there, why don't they start it six or eight, or eight months before the election rather than it's almost two years? What do you think their, their mindset is on that? They're great questions, but I don't even know who did it, so I don't even know. Yeah. I can't go and answer those questions. I mean, some people have the money to do this for entertainment value. Some people have a vested interest. I'd love to see an interview with whoever is responsible for this. Well, we're looking. Don Waters might know because he, th he thought it was us, but it's not us. I want to say hello to Molly. Uh, er early Shabbat Shalom to you. So, Mr. Uh, Gene. What is different about the way that the last council is, is governing as compared to this council? That's five people with one leader and uh, all duly elected. Well, I think I did a much better job of delegating and uh, involving my fellow council members. Everybody had a, a, a responsibilities, expectations. I certainly shared the spotlight uh, more with them. I don't know if anybody else got on the stage during the State of the Village. Um, you know, I think it's important that as mayor, you make everybody feel as part of a team and you get everybody to buy in. People support what they help to create and I think the issue is to get the emphasis off the mayor and get it back onto the council. I think as mayor you try to chair the meetings, you try to set a tone, but you don't try to shove everybody out and I'm very disappointed uh, with the fact that uh, a lot of these items, I know that Council Member Matson has brought items forward. If you go to the latest agenda, you can see some of uh, Council Member David Singer's items that will say deferred from this meeting, this meeting, this meeting, this meeting, this meeting. And you almost have to wonder, so many things being put on the agenda to squeeze out everybody else's items. Is everybody getting a fair shake to get their items through? For all I know, that could be uh, frustration from other members of the sitting Council Members uh, or, you know, there's even some that think it's put out to create sympathy. So, let, let's talk about the bridge over there on 87th Avenue. What street is that? Oh, let's not. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Okay. That seems to, traffic, 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 that seems to be the thing. And Alex Pinella, six months ago, he said, this election, we talked about countywide and all the others, it's going to be about traffic. Well, before we get on to your, to, to your answer, I'll give you a chance to think about it. For at least 10 years, this county commission, God bless them, have been stiffing all of us in Dade County, all right? So now all of a sudden the election's coming and everybody's worried about the traffic, all right? So what the com commission needs to do for the length of time they're there is let's get it done. South Dade has always been ignored and our my friends out of West Kendall, they, they got the worst of it, all right? And so uh, one of the things we can address is the issue on 87th Avenue move the people from the south end up here. What are the pros and the cons about opening up 87th Avenue? I grew up on 87th Avenue in the Westchester, South Miami area. You know, I'm tired of, you know, uh, the pro bridge people talk about Band-Aids. I am tired of Band-Aids myself. We are at a whole new level of lifestyle here. We are not the rural Miami-Dade County or back then Dade County where we had uh, horse farms. I mean, my dad used to keep horses out at uh, Rimrock Ranch, if anybody remembers, out there on Flagler near 107th. That's now high density apartments, if I know correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, horses off 122nd in uh, the west of uh, the Palmetto, which is now area around where the uh, Palmetto General Hospital is. Um, you know, I ke kept horses down in Homestead. I think those areas are still there. But, you know, I, I know people are frustrated. They keep saying that. Well, the rail's 10 years away. The rail is 20 years away. Well, you know, if they would have just bitten the bullet and done it. That was 20 years ago. We'd be stepping onto that rail now. And people want to keep ignoring things and people want to take the easy route. And, the, and, and you know, God, 
I just don't want to see our surface roads turned into the next super highways, and that's what's really going. I fought in 2006 to prevent uh, 87th Avenue from being four lane. Yes, I fought. We did a uniform, a unanimous resolution to fight that money. That money got turned over for other uses because it was going to make um, uh, 87th Avenue four lane. What do you think was going to happen with that? That was going to bring more traffic. Right. And uh, we, we don't want it. We want to remain a small village here. But at the same time, whether you want bridges or not bridges, I'm not opposed to bridges, but bridges for neighborhood roads, not bridges to replace transit that mm -hmm. we need. And by the way, we don't just have two issues. We, I mean, one issue. We have two issues. And right that is? Now. Now, well, we have more than two issues. But the traffic, we've got to get transit. And hopefully, if Pinellas gets elected, he will go and keep the promises of... Uh, of the half cent sales tax and hopefully what will happen is what happened when I went out on a fact-finding mission with then Mayor Peggy Bell who we worked so well together on trying to bring rail to South Dade is um, let's face it LA has two cents of sales tax for their rail system why because it's worth it as I've often said there's only two people that should be paying for mass transit those that use it and those that don't use it because there's an interest in you being able to drive your car to take your kids to school to do your deliveries to do whatever you need to do your service calls uh, with uh, the people that can make a a one-and-done stop and go rail to be off the road and make the less less uh, um, less cluttered for you to so be driving and I'm glad you brought about user roads so the MDX uh, is in the fight of its life and one p one particular it's a well-earned fight. Yes, and uh, so right now the MDX is sending out tens of thousands of refund checks of uh, people that spent more than one hundred fifty dollars a year. They're going to get, uh, I think, um, s some t rebate. I'm not quite sure how much. And at the same time, that's costing six million dollars to send that back. At the same time, a, a it wasn't quite state mandated, but MDX was trying to get ahead of the ball, lower the rates. If that continues, what will happen is MDX will be a maintenance organization. And that the roads that they built in advance, the ones of five years from now, well, I think they will be suffering f for that. And it is, you know, I, I, I wish there was a magic bullet, but there isn't. I know there's fights in the Redlands that tried to, you know, to keep the development. And I was down south the other day, 232 in US 1, the huge apartment building. There's a big co complex at 248th Street in US 1. I was told the other day that it was sold, huge development. And all these people, they're going to be driving up here. And, and some are going to be going through the, the, the uh, outskirts of Palmetto Bay. So what's the solution for Palmetto Bay and that traffic? solution for Palmetto Bay is to not be the cut through for everybody else. The solution for Palmetto Bay, why did they just want to put one bridge in at 87th? Why don't we want to put the bridges in everywhere? Why on 97th Avenue is the county talking about ceding that right of way over to a developer which will forever bar a bridge going up over yep. in that area? Why is it good for us and not for uh, the uh, areas that the other commissioners control. Why did they stop the bridge in Miami Lakes that they, I think, actually built? And the, you know, they've got the protest walls there between the two. Because you know they're just kicking that can down the road, literally, instead of doing what they need to do, spending what they need to do. Uh, and uh, you know, rail works two different ways. It will draw development. Uh, to the rail. I, I would like to say hello to Rodney Barreto. Thanks for checking in. Let's see who else. Anthony. Uh, can we get an answer from him as to what the odds are of the Dolphins playing in their home stadium for the Super Bowl? Yeah, come on, Rodney. Make it work. So, I, so it sounds yeah, like... Make it like Alabama last year where <laughs> they don't have the record, but they still get into the playoff system. So it sounds like you're against opening the bridge. Uh, I, I would do it if it was a neighborhood road. I would do it if there was transit. None of those factors are there. The county just wants to continue to build on the backs of the residents. They don't want to focus on the long-range solutions. We keep saying that we never get to the long-range solutions because they just want to do. But yes, I am against that okay. bridge. So I know that was that's a big to-do down there, and I know some of the people are mad at the local com commissioner. But you know what? If this village needs to state a position on it, though, and we don't hear a position. I hear a position from the mayor saying that... Uh, we're not stopping the bridge from going in. Well, promises were made to, to some people about um, 
you know, are you anti-bridge or are you pro-bridge? Are you just going to make missteps in management of our traffic program to where you're going to force the county's hand to put the bridge in so you can claim clean hands and say, I didn't put the bridge in, but yet you didn't do anything to try to mitigate that traffic or discourage development down south or doing so. Who so on the who on the council is speaking up and out about that road? I think it's time for that council to state its position. I think every two years that new council should state its position. Don't say there's a resolution out that it's four years old or that's ten yep. years old. Every issue, you know, the traffic situation now is different from what it was even two years ago. It certainly is different from what it was in 2006 and 2008 yep. when we were first involved in it. You know, eventually it may come to where there's no other solution but to put that bridge in, but that's because of the negligence of the traffic planners to address concurrency and to allow these continued developments down there. Okay, and s speaking of developments, you're out there, you're on your bicycle, you're getting into shape, it looks like you're, you know, you're- I'm at peace. You're at peace, and you're not jogging, but you're, 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 you're on that bike and you're running. My qu our inquiring minds wanna know, come the next election in Palmetto Bay, is your name gonna be on the ballot? That must mean yes. I do, you know, come on. Yeah. I, if you, you're, you're, asked, you heard it here if first. If you ask me that question, if you ask That's me that a yes, question guys. in 2014, that was a last minute decision out mm -hmm. there. And you can look to my blog. I was blogging in 2011, 2012. You know, this is all consistent. I've always been a very vocal person. Uh, I've never shied away. I, all, I honestly believe through conflict comes resolution sometimes. You just can't let things simmer. Sometimes Good. you have to bring them to a boil. Am I running? No. Can I say I will not be running? No. Okay. Is this a politician's answer? Unfortunately. Okay, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, I wanna thank I'm you. I'm just getting warmed up. I know, but we're gonna, we're gonna move on to other stuff. Just you pretend this is- You wanna be kind to your viewers? Yes, this is like the last of your, your, your three hour run. It's, I mean, bike ride, it's just about over. Oh, so where I get into my sprint. That's right, so we wanna thank you this very much for, for the coming down. Round Do your plug lady. for the Everglades Bike Club again. All right, Everglades Bike Club, you, you know, if, it's not just, it's not a race club. It's a, it's a social club, it's a club that gets out there, you learn to ride in a group, you learn how to follow the rules in the group. Uh, it's a wonderful group. It's a family oriented. It's everything you want. If you want to ride 20 plus, like I sometimes do, you, it's there. If you want to ride in the beginners groups, they're there. It's, it's fun. It's, it's great. I, I can't recommend the group enough. But I'll tell you, nothing's more fun than living down in Palmetto Bay when you look at the, uh, you, know, you go out there on, a, on a, a weekend morning or even a weekday morning and you see all the people jogging. Your time walking. is up in 15 My seconds. My time is not up, man. We're going to keep this thing going. The longer filibuster, Mr. Filibuster. Mayor, thank you very much. Folks, have a great day. Hey, and, don't blame and, me. And he Aaron, invited me Aaron on behind here. the cameras, thank you he very much.